There are so few titanosaurian sauropods known from remains complete enough to actually have a good idea of what they looked like. Sure, you can fill in the blanks with some semi-rigorous assessments, but it's not the same as having a perfect real-life kaiju skeleton to look at. Dino National Monument has spoiled many of us in the US, though, as most long-necked dinosaurs are just scraps from the least interesting but most informational parts of their bodies. Another scrappy critter was just described from the historical tourist town of Morella. Let's meet Garumba Titan. Titanosaurs the largest long-necked dinosaurs were an incredibly successful widespread and long-lived group. They began to diverge from the other sauropod dinosaurs during the late Jurassic, going extinct with all the other dino-era critters with the spicy space rock. Their early evolution is a bit of a mystery, as every single new one seems to show that their evolution wasn't a simple stepwise pattern, but had swirling branches that branched into more branches, with plenty of unique groups diverging to take advantage of all sorts of different niches worldwide. Titanosaur is a generic term most often used to refer to members of the scientific bin called Titanosauria. However, over the years, new groups and arrangements have shifted these animals into new positions. The broadest category containing all the heavy-set short-skulled sauropods is the Macronaria. They were distinct from the caterpillar-necked apatosaurs or horse-snouted diplodocids. Back in the day, this group was characterized by its more complete and charismatic Jurassic examples, Camarasaurus and Brachiosaurus. They now occupy their own groups with a handful or more of their closest relatives alongside, base of, within the group Titanosauriformes, and so I refer to them all as Titanosaurs, colloquially of course. Unfortunately, most sauropod dinosaur remains are extremely fragmentary. These animals were so large that only freak environmental conditions or events could cover their carcasses fast enough to halt the decay process and begin fossilization. So, paleontologists are often left with bits and pieces of the original animal. However, because these critters were so large, those chunks tend to be quite large as well. Thanks to the way these animals evolved, many bones throughout their skeleton contain traits that help paleontologists tell them apart from every single other known sauropod to both A, determine that what they have is a new animal, and B, determine the evolutionary relationships between the new animal and all the other sauropods. September of 2023 saw the publication of a paper in the Zoological Journal of the Linnaean Society by Pedro Moca, Fernando Escaso, Jose Gasuya, Angel Galobart, Begonia Posa, Andres Santos Cubero, Jose Sanz, and Francisco Ortega, describing the remains of a new titanosaur from the early Cretaceous of Spain, which provides new data for the early evolution of the group. According to the author team, in 1998, archaeologist Miquel Guardiola found the end of a large sauropod femur during an archaeological survey near the Hermitage of Sant Antoni de la Vespa, southwest of the mountain known as Mola de la Garumba, in the town of Morella in Castello province in the Valencian community of Spain. Yeah, they have a lot of subdivisions. The first fieldwork in the locality was carried out in 2005 and resulted in discovery of a pair of titanosaur carcasses that weren't super torn apart. The remains of the two specimens were deposited on top of each other, probably at two different times. The two complete hind limbs, as well as the ribs and some elements of the forelimbs, were removed from the overlying specimen. From the largest specimen, stratigraphically below, a complete hind limb and part of the other, as well as a set of articulated tail vertebrae, were removed. In 2008, a second paleontological campaign was conducted, extending the area excavated in 2005 to the east and west. Two main areas of interest were identified during this campaign. Immediately east of the bones found in 2005, the remains of an incomplete and eroded hip chunk were recovered, as well as a series of articulated back vertebrae and a possible neck vertebra along with corresponding ribs. These remains are in continuity and compatible with the largest specimen identified in 2005. Also, in continuity with the 2005 operation, two series of tail vertebrae were found to the west. The series slightly above corresponds to a series of middle to back tail vertebrae, whereas the series below represents a series of articulated middle tail vertebrae with their chevrons. 
there is no criterion to indicate that both series belong to one and the same individual, but their sizes are compatible with the largest specimen. After preparing the remains from this paleontological site, the team was able to verify the presence of a few elements of a third and a fourth individual that had not been detected during the fieldwork, and they are similar in size to the smallest individual identified in the first campaign. As you can see from the dig site map, the bones themselves are not immediately remarkable as they are a big old jumble of flotsam, but I would like to draw your attention to the feet and the connectedness of the specimens. As I have already recounted, many parts of the specimens were articulated. This means the bones are connected to one another as they were when the animal died. This isn't the rarest thing to happen with fossil specimens, but it is definitely still unusual. It means chunks of the animal were buried relatively soon after death and or decay. Another unusual aspect of this new sauropod is that it had both of its back feet mostly preserved. Feet are made of a bunch of small little bones, so they don't usually stick around to get fossilized. Obviously smallest relative here, but they were able to survive. The author team decided to name the new dinosaur Garumba Titan Morellensis. The generic name is derived from Garumba, referring to the peak known as Mola de la Garumba, near the Sant Antoni de la Vespa fossil site, which is one of the highest points in the municipality of Morella and Titan, which is a giant in Greek mythology. Morellensis refers both to the Archias de la Morella formation and to the town of Morella, where some of the first dinosaur remains in Spain were found and where the Sant Antoni de la Vespa site is located. When all of the fossils were fully prepared, photographed, 3D scanned, and the team described every single little trait preserved on the crumbling bones, they tallied them up and placed them in a phylogenetic software program of their choice, along with data collected by past researchers of a bunch of other sauropod dinosaurs that the new team suspect to be most closely related. With all that data, the software plopped out two analyses with slightly different placements of old Garumba Titan. The first one places the beast in a polytomy with early Cretaceous Spanish Tastavinsaurus and Europa Titan, plus some late Jurassic Brachiosaurids. Within this polytomy, some groups have been recovered as monophyletic, such as Diplodacoidea, Teriasauria, or Wintona Titan, and some deeply nested Somphospondylins. Monophyly is when a group contains its own most recent common ancestor and all the descendants of that common ancestor with no exceptions. This means that Garumba Titan is a Somphospondylin titanosauriform sauropod, meaning it likely had an appearance closer to what many folks may think of when they think of Brachiosaurus. This sort of super tall, sloped, long armed, short tailed, super long necked body plan continued on after Brachiosaurus died out, with some good examples being Sauroposeidon and Europa Titan. Obviously, Garumba Titan could have been a lot different from this, but this is the best approximation. The second analysis placed Garumba Titan as most closely related to Tastavinsaurus and the early Cretaceous Chinese Dongbei Titan, all of which were found to be more primitive relative to the rest of the group. Either way, Garumba Titan is still found to be an early form of Somphospondylin sauropod. What kind of world did this giant sauropod live in? The historically earliest discoveries that are referred to colossal reptiles or sauropods from the Lower Cretaceous of the Iberian Peninsula were provided by Villanova and Pira 1872 in Morella and by Savage 1897 to 1898 in Boca de Champim, Portugal. After these first references, several works were published on the Iberian Early Cretaceous sauropods, especially in the Maestrat and Cameros basins, but also in the Iberian ranges, Pre-Betic and Lusitanian basins, and more recently several new specimens have been found. Some of this material is very incomplete and provides little information on the Iberian sauropod diversity from the Hauterevian to the Aptian stages of the early Cretaceous, 132 to 113 million years ago. An important fossil record has been found in the Archaeus de Marilla formation, which was deposited during the late Barimian in the Maestrat Basin. 
The presence of Titanosauriforms in this formation, with some specimens thought to be related to Brachiosauridae and others to Titanosauria, provided detailed study for several specimens collected in the Archaeus de Morella formation around the Morella locality and belonging to the historical collection of the Museo Nacional de Ciencias Naturales in Madrid. This led to a higher sauropod diversity hypothesized in this formation, with three possible different titanosaur forms, a possible Laurasia form, and two Sampholspondylins. Another informative sauropod specimen from this formation is a possible Brachiosaurid collected at El Cantarat and described in 1982. Recent work has found that this specimen may be more closely related to the Sampholspondylin sauropods rather than Brachiosaurids. The work that came up with this redesignation therefore found no presence of diplodocoids, brachiosaurids, and titanosaurs in the Archaeus de Morella formation as previously proposed by other authors. The formation that held Garumba Titan also produced the Styracosternin ornithopods Morellodon, Iguanodon bernisartensis, and Mantellisaurus, as well as the Spinosaurid theropods Valibona venatrix and Protathletus. Other dinosaurs were likely around at the time but remain elusive. The authors lump other fauna from a formation of the same time as Gorumba Titan but from a slightly different area west from the dig site. The Ribachi sword Demandosaurus and Sampospondylin Europa Titan, as well as the Brachiosaurid Soraya Titan, may have shared this region with Garumba Titan. There were likely all sorts of smaller animals, like crocs, snakes, lizards, amphibians, with two known turtle taxa, Brodachiles, Royoi, and Eodortoca, and even an unnamed leptoclided plesiosaur. These results reveal a complex phylogenetic mosaic for the sauropod fauna of the Iberian Peninsula during the early Cretaceous, composed of forms with northern hemisphere affinities, your titanosaur forms, and southern hemisphere affinities like your ribachisaurids. However, the systematics of many sauropod occurrences from the lower Cretaceous of Europe is uncertain, and some of them are represented by significantly incomplete specimens. A diverse faunal composition has been proposed, including Teriosaurs, Rubachisaurs, Brachiosaurs, and non Titanosaurian and Titanosaurian Sampholspondylins. What more will be found next in Iberia? For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.